hands this morning and bless his name. We have come with a heart of gratitude. Hallelujah. I know we are ready to give God praise. Okay, so in case you think in 2018 you didn't dance, so we are giving you another chance to dance. Eh? Hallelujah. We are here to give God some crazy, crazy, crazy. Are you ready? Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do we have excited people in the house this morning? Are you excited? Somebody give God praise. Make a joyful noise. Let's shout. Let's scream. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. It has started though. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
God is good, oh. My God is good, oh. Oh! 
just give him praise. I want to give you 30 seconds to praise him in your own words, in your own voice, in your own dialect, in your own way. Hey, come on, my boy. Let's think about his goodness. Delivered you from accident, from death, from fire, from sickness, and you're still standing. Hey! From depression, from lack. You know, sometimes you have a deadline, and God showed up. He made a way. Hey! We are grateful people. We are lively stones. And we have come to return all the glory back, all the glory. He cares maybe in some ways. I thought it was my own calculation. Lord, I've come to return all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. Take it. Hey! You're incredible.
understand this morning for everyone that is worshipping there are dimensions in God one instant you walked into a room another instant you are before him one instant you walk into a physical location another instant you are seated with him in heavenly realms these are realities. They are not just documentations in the Bible. This is our life. This is our life. So are you standing before him this morning? Are you offering him your praise? Are you offering him your worship? What are you saying to him? For you are standing before him. What are you saying to him? We well, thank you, Jesus. We well, thank you, Lord.
there is nothing about your life that is by accident. Where you are, what you're doing, the circle of influence around you, what you read, everything about you is by design. Nothing is by accident. The life you have is located in Christ Jesus. So that life is not like a leaf caught in a whirlwind, being blown wherever. That life is defined. That life is defined. It may not look like that to you. You may tell me this morning that you don't know the chaos, the challenges I've had to encounter. But I can tell you, your life is by design. God is the one in charge of your life. God is the one in charge of your life. If you can only see through Christ Jesus because our life is located in him Babu was talking about Christ in Isaiah 9 he said those who sit in darkness has found they found great light those who sit in darkness because in Christ Jesus your life gets illuminated you no longer have to grow up in darkness because he's the light of the world. He's the light of the world. The Bible says he's the one that lights every man that comes into the world. Christ Jesus is in your life to give you illumination. To shine his light into every dark area until you become like him. Until you become like him. Until you become like him. Before you have your seat, let me say this to you. Many people don't know what we do when we come to church. We're not just here to listen to the word. We're not just here to hear the word. We are here to become the word. Until you become, you stay there. We are here to become. Bible says we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a glass that is a mirror by the glory of Christ we are being changed into the same image. What image? The same image we behold. The same image we see, we become. What we see, we become. What we see, we become. What we see, we become. The sicknesses, they give way to health because there was no sickness in him. What we see, we become. Poverty gave, gives way to wealth because he wasn't poor at all. His needs were met. Inadequacies, shortcomings, they give way to competences and great abilities by the power of God because there is no incompetence in him. So we have come this morning for an exchange to look into the word of God and see who we really are for that is what we are becoming. That is what we are becoming. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for another opportunity you've given to us to fellowship with one another, to gather around your word, O oh God, and see who we truly are through the lens of your word. God, I pray this morning for eyes that are open and ears that are open, O oh God. I pray that these eyes we see in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that these ears we hear clearly what your instructions are in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
If you are excited to be here, I want you to shout hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. So good to have you worship with us this morning. That's for those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. This morning, I believe strongly in my heart that you'll be blessed beyond measure. But let me quickly say this. There was a quote I heard long time ago. Um, I don't know who first said it. He said, God gave man the whole eternity to make success of it, but man cannot manage eternity, so he broke it down to centuries. Man could not handle centuries, so he broke it down to what? Eh? From millennium to centuries to decades, man could not manage it, so he broke it down to years. He couldn't manage it, he broke it down to what? To months. He couldn't manage months, so he broke it down to what? He couldn't manage weeks either, so he broke it down to? He couldn't manage days, so he broke it down to? Couldn't manage hours, so he broke it down to? He couldn't manage many, a minute, so he broke it down to? That if a man would take thought, managing every second, he will make success of his life. A lot of us don't believe in the new year crossover and all that. I don't believe in it either. Because there is no difference between 2018 and 2019. No difference. The only difference that that year can make is the difference that you bring into it. For you see, a lot of people make adjustments. And they make adjustments on the outside. I will stop doing this. I will stop. They just make adjustments and then the first one week, a week into the new year, they are unable to keep such resolutions. You know why? Because that adjustment is not something you make on the outside. The first adjustment to make a success of a year, a new year, must start within you. If it does not start within you, you it cannot happen outside. Hallelujah. It must start from within you. Amen. Before I go into the word I have this morning, I have five timely instructions for everyone. They are specifically for some people in this place. And of course, you will identify, I mean, know yourself as I read these things out. God gave this to me. Within the week, I was talking to someone about something totally different. And all of a sudden, there was a switch. I began to tell this person that, you see, don't worry about it. It has to do with money. I said, don't worry about the money. This is the instruction from the Lord. I did not think about it. I wasn't thinking about it. I've been praying for them, but I didn't know what was wrong. For some years, some things were not just working right. God just gave it to me at that instant. I told them, I said, this and this are the things happening. He said, yes. I said, you have to correct this immediately. In fact, forget this discussion I've had with you. This, as a matter of urgency, you've got to correct these things because that is what is holding all the things. That's the reason why you have not seen the fruit, so to speak, of your labor. And I'm going to share some things with you. So that is how important it is. I said, stop everything. First, address that. Now, 2019 is coming. See, it's another opportunity like a blank check that God has given to you. To appraise your life. To look at the things you've not, you didn't do right in 2018. To begin to put things right. You see, it is within the scriptures for you to prepare for a new season. That new season is not just what pastor declares. That new season is what you have brought upon yourself. To say that, you see, this new year, everything is going to be different. But you see, things are not going to be different if you do not adjust, make some adjustment within you. Hallelujah. So the first part, this is not the message, is to just give specific instructions to some people. The first thing I want to tell some people here this morning is that you've got to reconnect back to a particular source. There are some people here, you have drank from a place, you have learned from a place, you've been blessed by some people, but as of today, you are not even on talking terms. As of today, there is nothing, no connection between you because you have moved away from them. You think that they have fulfilled their own part in your life and you have nothing again to gain from them or for them to gain from you, and so you stayed away. Hallelujah. And there is an offense in your heart, there is an offense in your heart causing you not to connect to those people. Hallelujah. you got to allow the cleansing power of the word of God to affect you this morning. 
Matthew chapter 11 from verse, verses 1 to 6, I believe it was talking about um, John the Baptist. You see, John the Baptist was used by God to introduce Christ into the ministry. You know, he was baptized. Baptism shows identification. John the Baptist came after over 400 years that the last prophet prophesied. And so if there's going to be any connection with what God was going to do, whoever God is sending must connect to the message he has given to John as a forerunner. So John began to say some things, and it was quite popular in those days. He was the forerunner of Christ. When Christ came, Christ also continued in that. And to show that what John had been saying was consistent and was correct from God's perspective, Jesus showed up at River Jordan and he was baptized by John. Hallelujah. He was baptized by John. But you see, time went because John's ministry was moving and Jesus' ministry also was progressing side by side. So a time came that John, I believe he became envious. I believe he started doubting certain things. And so he sent men to Jesus and they said, ask him, are you the one to come or should we expect another? Jesus said, go and tell John in verse 4, 11, 4, the things we should hear and see. What did he say? Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf fear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Why do you think he added that? He added it because John at that point had already picked up an offense. Jesus had to correct his character. You've got to correct yours this morning immediately. You've got to collect, correct it and begin. You see, your life, when I started, I said your life is not in isolation. A lot of people don't understand what I mean when I say that. Everything around you matters. Everything. Because you are not an ordinary being. There's a reason why you are here listening to me this morning. There's a reason why it is this church and not another. There's a reason why you are walking in that place and not another place. So you cannot just live your life as even some things are ordinary, natural. For you, they are not. For you, everything is spiritual. Because God is ministering to you based on what is around you. Don't take offense. Reconnect back. Make that adjustment. And you will see things that will begin to happen in your life. Hallelujah. The second timely message I have. For someone here, is that you've got to pay attention to those who are sent to you and those who are sent to. I will tell you why this is important. For the past, I don't know how many weeks, I've been meditating on Elisha, Elijah, and Abraham, and things like that. And this particular one came to my heart. That you see, oftentimes the people that are sent to you, they don't even know they were sent to you. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You see, I'm not going to be reading scriptures because of time, but I'm going to give you the reference. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 18, Elijah was sent to a woman. Is it Shunammite? No, 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 Zarephath. Widow of Zarephath. Hallelujah. A widow in Zarephath. What God said was that I have commanded. God said I have commanded a widow. What happened was that he declared that there won't be rain. And there was no rain. So when the drought eats, God sent him to brook Cherit to drink from the brook and to be fed by ravens. So a time came that that brook dried up. Immediately God showed up and said, I have commanded the widow to feed you. This next phase is a widow that is going to feed you. He said, I have commanded. I was shocked when I was reading that story. Because when Elijah saw that woman, Elijah recognized the woman. But when the woman saw Elijah... The woman didn't recognize Elijah. But God said, I've commanded her. She said, go and give me water. The woman was going to bring water. You know how in Yoruba parlance, sorry those who don't speak Yoruba, that unibara and bolebo. Go and give me water. As the lady was going to bring water, the prophet said, um, when you are coming, just bring bread and had some things to eat. The woman said, no. What I have left is just for me and my son to eat. And then afterwards to expect death. But guess what? He said, go and do what I've commanded you. Go and do that. And thank God the woman obeyed. And the woman obeyed and you see the great provision and all that throughout the period of famine. The point I'm trying to make is that some, number one, 
you've got to be careful the way you treat people around you. Because oftentimes the people that you are sent to and those who are sent to you, you don't recognize each other. But there is a constant. If I am good to everyone, if I am somebody who works in love, if I am someone who is given to hospitality and all that, whether you recognize or not, it won't matter. You will treat everyone correctly. Understand what I'm talking about? You've got to pay attention to the people around you. One of the things you have to watch at this time are those who want to cause you to, um, those who want to cause you, maybe, uh, maybe they are not behaving correctly. Because you see, oftentimes you are in a situation, this person has been sent to you, but you think because you heard clearly that God said this person has been sent to you, that it automatically means that the person will be nice to you. No. The person may not be nice to you. He does not know he's been sent to you. So why should he be nice? They can treat you unfairly. But you that you know you heard clearly that there is a purpose for which I'm in, I'm in this place, you've got to keep yourself. You've got to guard yourself. When you are treated unjustly, don't just say, throw in the towel and say, I'm going. I'm, not, I'm tired. It doesn't have to do with money. Because in a situation, it's possible that they are not even hiding, so to speak, value to you in terms of Nera and Kobo. But you've got to recognize that there is something you are there to pick up beyond money. Hallelujah. Pay attention to those that have been sent to you. The second thing I want you to take from that is that you must know how to demand also. If you look at that story, you realize that the woman did not know that she's been sent to the man of God. The man of God said, go and do my own first. You've got to know how to insist. Now, the problem is, if you have not heard from God and you are insisting, you can get booted out of the place. So that's why you've got to be the man of the spirit. So you must know that you must be rest assured in your heart by the word of God that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Make the demands. Because they've been sent, but they do not know. The woman didn't know. So you can make demand that this is what you are to do for me. So you must know, be sensitive to know that this is what is actually playing out. I am in this place because this person is supposed to do this for me, but they do not know it. They can't see it. Open their eyes by telling them, hallelujah. Make that demand, hallelujah. The third thing that the Lord laid in my heart to just instruct you by is that you must rid yourself of filthy lucre, unjust gain, money ill-gotten. You must clean yourself of all those. Hallelujah. Rid yourself of that. It's very, very important. In fact, this one, he pressed it like a burden in my heart. I will tell you the reason. The reason is because if things are supposed to be working with, uh, in your life at a particular measure, Pastor is teaching the word, is supposed to be eating your heart and producing the results. Things, I mean, things that you study and you believe and you confess and you have no doubt in your heart that this thing will happen in your life if you are a greedy person. If you are someone who is involved in slaughtered altar. Once there is money involved, every other thing, your integrity, everything can be slaughtered on the altar of, of money and all that. You must know that at the point at which you are embracing that field on just gain, you are cutting yourself from the flow of the life of God. That's what I want you to know. It won't work. You will hear the same thing like the rest of the people, but it will work for them. It won't work for you. For instance, in this church, mighty things are happening. To a lot of people, mighty things are happening to a lot of people, but you will not see it. Because when things like that are happening, it misses in the neighborhood, and it will soon be your turn. But you may never experience it because you have embraced something that is not of God. The reference I'm going to give to you, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 to 31, and of course chapter 5, verse 20. The story here has to do with that woman that asked, the Shunammite woman that asked uh, Elisha to come and stay. You, go, you know, in a house, prepare the room and all that. And the man was so, the man of God was so blessed. And he said, uh, what can we do to this woman? Can, should I introduce you to the rulers of the land? The woman said, no, I dwell among my people. Why would you introduce me? You know how the U.S. ambassador will come and then they want to introduce me to Buari. For what? You are in my country. I'm supposed to lead the le delegation. And he said, the woman said, no, I dwell among my people. But you see what they said? Gehazi said, I observe that she doesn't have an issue. And the woman, man of God said, by this time, according to the time of life, you will have a child. The woman said, do not deceive me. But according to what the man of God said, it happened. It happened the same way. Hallelujah. It happened exactly the way he prophesied. But look at it. 
Some time later, the guy complained of headache and all that and died. Immediately, the woman saddled the horse. This is where I'm going. <laughs> After all the things, he said, is it well? He said, it is well. Then the woman grabbed the leg of a light. I'm, I'm being dramatic because children are here. Okay? I hope you know I'm doing some things deliberately. I want them to be able to understand what I'm saying. So the woman grabbed the leg of Elisha and Gehazi wanted to push her away. You know, the servants of the man of God, like protocol, they will block everybody. Sometimes they act like bouncers. The man of God said, no, the woman's heart is heavy. Leave her. The woman said, the son, and complained. Do you know what I'm driving at? He gave his staff of office to Gehazi. He said, go and put it upon the child and wake the child up. The woman said, I will not leave you if you don't follow me now. So the Bible said the man of God, Elisha, followed the woman, followed the woman. But Gehazi ran ahead of them to the place because ah, they have given you power. You've got to test it. The woman just took away the opportunity by saying the man of God should come along. So he said, ah, even though the man of God is coming, I will run ahead. Run ahead, place the rod upon the child and nothing happened. We didn't know why nothing happened. There was nothing before that time to tell us why nothing happened. Until later, when another man came, and then we saw the greed inside the man. Then we saw the greed. We saw that even though he was with the man of God, he was there, he had seen. There was a time his, he opened, his eyes were open to see the heavenlies and all that. He has partaken of the things of, of Christ. Allow me to use it that way. He has embraced the things of God. He had seen the mighty things of God. His eyes were open and he saw hosts of angels. But guess what? Nothing happened when he laid the rod. Why? There was greed within him. You must read yourself or feel the looker. You must correct this thing. You must correct it. You must begin to pay attention and correct these things before you get to a point where you are asking, why is it happening to everybody and it's not happening to me? You've got to read yourself or feel the looker. Hallelujah. You've got to read yourself of these things. You've got to read yourself of these things. Hallelujah. The fourth thing that I want you to pay attention to is that it is important for you to mean what you say in the place of prayer. Mean what you say in the place of prayer. Don't go through the motions of prayer in 2019 or the meaning days that we have. The one more day we have in 2018 and all that just let it go from this time forward mean what you say we have examples in scriptures of those who are praying but nothing happened now i cannot lay claim to this i, I was meditating on this and then i was i listened to a man of god and he was trying to describe something very important he said um zechariah is this Ze zechariah and mary had the same experience the angel showed up to the two of them the angel promised them a child, okay, each. And then Mary was afraid. He said, be not be afraid. Zechariah was, Zechariah was afraid. He said, do not be afraid and all that. But the question is, he said, he was surprised that God struck Zechariah with deafness. And Mary also doubted. Mary said, how can this thing be? But the angel explained how the things will happen. But when Zechariah asked, how can this thing be? He struck him with, how dare you dare doubt the angel that stands in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I think it was Pastor Poju that shared this sometimes. I think this thing I'm telling you now, I think is the one. Now, he said, you should read that place again. What the angel said was that your prayer has been answered. The man has been praying. The answer to the prayer came. The man doubted what he has been praying. What has he been praying? A lot of believers are praying, but they are not expecting anything. A lot of believers are praying, and when the answer to the prayers show up, they doubt. They doubt it. So nothing happens. The status quo remains. Hallelujah. You must Ensure that the same does not happen to you from this time forward. Another example is found in Acts chapter 12, verse 5, when Peter was in prison. Remember, they were praying for his release, and they were praying. When Peter showed up, they said, they, said, they told Rhoda, you must be mad. When the young lady insisted, they said, it must be his ghost. How, 
How can you be praying and be doubting at the same time? Ensure that does not happen to you. Lastly, before I go into the message, live a fasted life. It's not every meal that you need to consume or you need to consume immediately. Some live till later. Others keep completely. Hallelujah. It's not every meal that you need to consume. It's a principle in scripture. Someone said, I'm in the new covenant. There is no place for fasting. You are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. There is a place for fasting. Fasting, what it does is that you are denying the flesh of certain things. Hallelujah. You are denying the flesh of certain things. Let me tell you, the very first person that showed us the principle of fasting in the Bible is the man Moses. Moses was called to Mount Sinai. He went with God and he stayed there. That was where he received the instructions. Hallelujah. And then in Psalm 100, and now I can't miss this, 103 verse 7, the Bible says that the children of Israel know he made his way known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. In other words, he was saying that Moses understood why God was doing what he was doing. But the children of God only understood his acts. They, only see the, they can only see the miracles. They do not understand the God behind the miracles. Their only relationship with God is the miracles. Now, this was a man giving over to fasting. So in the place of fasting, he was able to deny the flesh and that ushered him into an experience where he's able to see God clearly. Hallelujah. In 2000, I mean, I'm telling you some of the adjustments you need to make as we move into the new year. Live a life of fasting. Skip some meals. Focus on God. Read yourself of certain, because when a man is full, he cannot think the thoughts of God. Let me say that again. For those who did not hear, when a man is full, he cannot think the thoughts of God. Food. Food blocks revelation. <laughs> food blocks revelation. You are hearing it from me. Quote me anywhere. It does. Because when a man sleeps, that is when you will sleep and you will see yourself eating some other funny things in the dream. I'm not saying if you see yourself eating in the dream, I hope you enjoy it. Hallelujah. Because me, I will enjoy it. I've not had it. But if I had it, I will enjoy the meal. And ask for the toothpick. I'll do that. Amen. Some people understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Timely instruction. Pay attention to it. It's very, very important. And I want you to look forward to It's unfortunate that, uh, well, not unfortunate. Today is Sunday. Yeah. Tomorrow, 10 p.m., we're going to be here. We are here to praise God, to appreciate him. And, of course, there are some specific instructions that will be given to us. Amen. That is very important. Some people said, why are we doing it, Pastor? Well, number one, TBC, we observe it. Number two, we've got to help a lot of people, you know, move into the new year the way they should. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I want to share with us briefly... What I've titled the light of life. The light of life. The last time I was here, I was sharing with us the, that what we see, what we hear, and what we do matter. I'm going to continue, but this flow is going to be slightly different. Turn your Bibles to the book of Acts. Acts chapter. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Remember, um, Stephen was seized, and shortly before he was martyred, um, he began to say some things. In fact, he, he took them through a long journey from Abraham down to, the, to Christ Jesus. But when he got to verse 51 of Acts chapter 7, look at what he said. Okay, to give it a little context, um, let me read from verse 44. It says, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, 
who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What else will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Verse 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in what? And you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Hallelujah. This is where I want to start this morning. He said the reason why they resisted was not because they were wicked people. The reason why they did not receive Christ or did not receive the gospel was not because they were unkind or wicked people. The reason, the Bible says, is because their eyes and their ears were uncircumcised. Now, let me give a little context to this. If there were a group of people in the time of Christ that would embrace the gospel, it should be these people. Because they were praying. They were given to the order of Abraham. They were praying. They knew what prayer was. They knew what fasting was. In fact, they had the prophecy that the Messiah would come. But when this eventually played out, they did not. They rejected him. The Bible is saying the reason for that rejection was because their eyes and their ears were blocked. In other words, they would have embraced the gospel if their eyes and ears were open. What I'm trying to say this morning is this. It's important for you, you see, you may say that, well, I'm a believer, I don't fall into this category and all that. But the truth of the matter is that you have not embraced every word that has been spoken to you. You have not embraced every word that has been spoken to you. Every message you have heard, there are some that you perhaps have embraced, there are so many that you have not embraced. In not embracing those things, I tell you, the reason is not because you, do, you didn't want to embrace them, the reason is because your eyes and ears were, were blocked also. For if your eyes and ears were open, you will see the significance of what you are receiving, of what you are being presented, and you will embrace it. The reason is because you cannot see. You cannot see. The reason is because you cannot see. And the reason is not far-fetched. I will tell you the reason. The reason is this. The man that is born after God, born in Christ, dwells in two worlds. The man dwells in two, there are two dimensions at least to his life. Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. Let me show you something. Colossians chapter 1. The man that is in Christ Jesus dwells in two worlds. That is the reason why most of the time we are blinded to what God is doing. Colossians chapter 1 verse 2. Are you there? Can we read it together? One, two, go. Some people are not there. Can we do it together? Want to go? Where? Who are also where? These saints being described there, they are in, they, they were in Christ. Oh, let, let me use the present simple. They are in Christ Jesus and they are also where? In Colossae. These are two dimensions. They are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, it's both a location but beyond the location is the dimension. And we explain what, the, what I mean by dimension. And then being in Colossae is another dimension. Being in Colossae means you are living, your house is located in a particular place. You have certain neighbors. You have people you relate with. There is a government. There is a system of gov governance in place where you are living. But you see that you are in Christ Jesus also means that in Christ there is a rule. There is government. There is a way, there is, there is a way things operates in that also. So the reason why oftentimes believers are blinded from seeing what God is doing is because they oscillate between two dimensions. Depending on the one you give yourself to, that is the measure of the light of God's word that you are going to receive into your heart. Hallelujah. 
Going back to that story. So there is a new thing that God has done. Christ Jesus has come, put an end to the law. A new covenant has come into force. But all these people rejected all that. Now, can you see it in the dimension? I mean, in, can you have the understanding? That's a new thing that God wants to do. It can be a new thing that God wants to do in the life of a man. But if that man cannot see it, if that man cannot perceive it, there is no way he can embrace it. You've got to know what God wants to do before you cooperate with him. The cooperation that God is not getting from a man is because that man cannot see what God is doing. He can't see what God is about to do. The moment he's able to see it, I'm telling you, the man will be able to align himself with the purpose of God. The Bible says in, um, um, what's this scripture? He said, thou with you, is this Psalm? I think it's Psalm 36, if I'm not wrong. He said, with you is the fountain of life. Right? In your light, I do what? I see light. In your light. Let me use the physical to ex explain something to us quickly. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse um, 16, I believe, Paul was praying for the Ephesians. He said that the eyes of their hearts may be what? May be enlightened. He said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, verse 16, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. How will he do it? How will they receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation? How will they walk in wisdom? How will they begin to operate in this wisdom? He explained it further. He said it will happen as the eyes of your understanding or another scripture says as the eyes of your heart become enlightened that word enlightened means full of light he said the, you will be able to walk in the wisdom of God once your heart become flooded with light once light is able to penetrate and get to your heart, he said at that instant you will be able to walk in wisdom, you will be able to exhibit certain traits like God's so the, he, that was his prayer. His prayer wasn't that um, he was always writing to them, encouraging their heart. But beyond writing to them letters of encouragement, he said, I also pray for you that your heart will be enlightened. Let me tell you this. In the dimension which is called in Christ, in the dimension which is called in Christ, light is needed for you to understand, to see what is going on. A man cannot walk from here to there without stumbling on these things if he's doing it with his eyes closed. Let me say that again. If I'm walking from this place to that place and this obstacle is there, if my eyes are open, I will go by it and get to where I'm going. If light of this world is not entering my eyes, the definition is what? Blindness. I will stumble upon this thing. Do you get what I'm saying? As it is in the physical, so also it is in the spiritual. In the physical, you need the light of this world to reflect through the, is it cornea that is called? Pass through your eyes, go inside, put the image that you are seeing, put another image at the back of your eyes, and then it sends it through the nerves, to your brain and optic nerves and to your brain and then you are able to interpret the image correctly. Hallelujah. But where does it start from? With reception of light. Light is first received before the image can be casted. Once light is received, then the image is pressed there and then you are able to see clearly what is in your way, whether you are to take it up or to avoid it or whatever decision you are going to make started with the light entering into your eyes. In the spiritual realm, the Bible says in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, um, is it, What's the verse now? 130. Thy word is what? A lamp. A light unto my. Sorry, can we, can we say it? 
a lamp, lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. The word of God is what? The word of God is what? Lamp. What does lamp give? The word of God is light. 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 That means what is happening this morning as I'm teaching is that everything I'm saying now is to find its way in, through your eyes so that the image can be impressed within you. That means what I'm doing is for the light of the word of God to get into you. Once that is done, my work is I've accomplished my aim. The light of the word must get in there. If the light of the word does not get into you, no image can be formed. No image can be formed. And the Bible says that the word of God is that light. <laughs> the word of God is that light. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you receive God's word, there are so many things you are going through. What the word of God does, every one of us are hearing the same thing. But can I tell you this? The image that will be formed in our heart may not be the same. In the natural, these two eyes are needed to receive the light. In the dimension that is called in Christ, the light, the eyes of the spirit, of your spirit, is what the Bible calls your what? Your heart. When the Bible talks about the heart in scriptures, it's talking about your ability to see the things that are in the dimension that is called in Christ. All the things that God has done for you in Christ. So it is with the eyes, with your heart, that you see. Through your, in your spirit, the same way you see through these physical eyes in your physical body. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, he is saying adjust your lens. Ensure that you see correctly. Because the things that you see are what you are going to replicate on the earth. The things that you see are what you are going to replicate on the earth. Jesus said, my father walk and I also walk. What I see the father do, that is what I do. What I see the father do, that is what I, I also do. What I'm trying to do this morning is to change your orientation. The word of God is not just something you hear and you store. You must labor to see what is being presented to you. You must labor to see what is being presented to you. You must labor to see what is being presented to you. Let me give you an example. Pastor Benro was leading prayers this morning, and at some point he began to pray for our children. At some point he began to pray for couples. He began to pray for the church. He began to say some things. The things, how I wish that the things that we are praying are what we are seeing. You must shift your focus from just praying based on what is happening around you. For you to be able to rise, you must rise above what is happening around you for there to be a situation, I mean a change in your situation. Let me explain. If um, in the place of work I'm being persecuted, nobody likes me, everybody I'm being victimized or I feel victimized and all that, and all that is going on. And then I go to the place of prayer and I say, Lord Jesus, help me conquer all these people, all these enemy in the workplace. Help me, oh God, to conquer them. Help me, oh God, give me, in fact, you can even pray the correct prayers. Give me strength to be able to withstand all these things I'm going through. I am telling you that that is not the correct way to respond. You are responding to the situation. What I'm teaching this morning is that you go to the world and what you want to find is that why are these things happening? Through the scriptures, as you stay with the scripture, you stay in there until the light casts the image, the light of the gospel, casts the image of what is going on in your heart. That is when you are now beginning to pray. When you are praying based on what you have seen, you have risen above what is going on. 
around you. We are not created to be reactive. God did not create us to react. God created us to what? Overcome in this life. God didn't create us to react to the things happening around us. He created us to overcome, to subdue. Everything has been placed in subjection under our what? Under our feet. Everything. What I'm telling you now, we take labor. What I'm telling you now, you are going to stay in there. What I'm telling you now, we cost time. You will need to expend time to be able to realize this. But it is something you can do. You can begin to change the story of your life. You can begin to walk a different walk from now. I sat with a man. I went to the car. I just sat there with earphone. And for whatever reason, this guy just wanted to chat me up. I didn't know he was talking to me. When I turned, I saw him talking to me. I just removed it. It was a security guard. He told me I heard that. I just dropped everything I was doing. I just began to talk to him. And certain things started coming out. Before I knew it, the guy was on his knees. I wasn't prophesying. I was just talking to him. He said, sir, are you a pastor? Um, I said, why did you ask? He said, you said this, you said this, you said this. These are the things going on in my life. I said, yes, I'm a pastor and all that. You know, and, and we began to say some things. Now, what I'm trying to say is that I realized right there and then that this thing does not, it doesn't matter whether you have four degrees or you don't have any degrees. The word of God manifesting in the life of a man has nothing to do with the condition of that man. What it has something to do with, can that man receive the light of the gospel into his heart? This morning as I'm talking to you, he said, what exactly is pastor saying? Why are we listening to this? What is going on? Why this and this and that is going on in your heart? You are blocking your heart from receiving the light of the word. Because it has nothing to do whether or not you like me or not. Whether or not you like my style or not, it has nothing to do with it. It has all to do with your ability to receive the light of the word of God into your heart. To receive the light of the word of God into your heart. Hallelujah. So we see, you see with your heart. You see with your heart. Hallelujah. You see with what? With your heart. Hallelujah. Let me show you another scripture. Hallelujah. That's in Colossians chapter 3. The Bible says then, from verse 1, If then you were raised with Christ... He says, you should seek those things which are what? Which are where? Which are above. Where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. He said, set your what? Your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. In other words, he's saying through the death of Christ, you have been transformed, so you have the ability to participate in this dimension. What is this dimension? This dimension is a realm of existence. I've been saying dimension, dimension. It's a realm of existence. It looks pretty much like this natural one, but it's totally different from it. In this natural world, you have distances. In this natural world, you have... you, you uh, Things take time, time rules, and all that. But you see, in this dimension, time is suspended. In this dimension called in Christ, things happen there that time, as fast as you think time is, it is too slow to catch up with what has already happened in this dimension. Let me give you an example. I begin to picture 2019 as I set scriptures before me and I'm reading the scriptures unto the point that I understand that what God is telling me regarding the year is that I should do this, I should implement this, I should read this book, I should go and pick up this one. As I'm studying the scriptures, it's instructing my heart regarding what to do. You see, all those things he has told me to do, he's telling me because he's showing me where everything is going to end up. So I can see the picture, the end result of all the things he's asking me to do. But you see, when I come from that dimension into the realm, this physical world, I cannot see all the things in that realm happening here. But what begins to happen is that I begin to act out all the things he told me in this realm called in Christ. I begin to act them out in this natural world. As I begin to act them out, the natural world begins to adjust 
to what I have seen in that realm. I will say that again. The dimension I'm talking about called in Christ Jesus. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. We have been blessed beyond measure in Christ Jesus. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. We are healed and totally, completely healed and we are living in good health in Christ Jesus. By his stripes we have been healed in Christ Jesus. Our sins have been forgiven in Christ Jesus. Grace is available for us 24-7 in Christ Jesus. You see what I'm saying? I'm a successful man because of the spirit of God that is dwelling with, within me in Christ Jesus. Everything we have received in Christ Jesus, we must through the word of God, gain the ability to see clearly and understand them. That is when we can come into the physical realm and begin to proclaim and pray what we have seen in that realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope that is clear enough. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in verse 2, it says, set your mind on the things above. How do I set my mind on the things above? I will show you. Not on things on the earth. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. People do not know. So when you read scriptures and the Bible says you should set your mind on the things above, someone said it means I should think about the things that talks about heaven. That, that's correct and all that. But for the sake of this message, what the Bible is saying is that gain the ability to see into the unseen. Gain the ability to see what God has completed regarding you. Gain the ability to see what Christ Jesus accomplished on your behalf. The moment you see it, I'm telling you, nothing can stop you on the earth. You are limited on the earth because you are yet to see it. You are just gambling, doing this. Let me see if this will work or this won't work. But when it comes to implementing what you have seen in Christ Jesus, um, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Let me show you, show you a scripture that you know but you may not have paid attention to it. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Are you there? Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 19. The title of, my, uh, of this particular passage says, The Trustworthy Prophetic Word. Many people, when they hear the word, you know, if you have been looking at crossover night, whatever, some will say it's going to be prophetic. It's going to be, you've been hearing, you've been seeing that prophetic and all that. Let me tell you what they, are, what they mean. If they mean something else, I don't know what that means. But what, <laughs> when the Bible talks about prophetic, the Bible is talking about the word of God. The Bible is talking about the word of God. At best, what will happen is that through the meditation on the word of God, they are able to tell you specific things that will happen based on the word. But when you talk about the prophetic word, we are actually talking about the word of God. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. It, said, it says, and so we have what the prophetic word confirmed, which we do well to do what? To heed. As what? Can you see it? He's calling the prophetic word light. He's saying the prophetic word is light. If I call you and I say, Minister Nii, this and this are what God has said concerning you in 2019. If you cannot receive it, nothing is going to happen. That word is sure. That word is certain. But it takes your reception. If you cannot receive it, if you cannot see the light, receive it as a light into your heart, nothing will happen. This one says, we have the prophetic word makes a thing confirmed. He said, we will do well to take it to it as what? Light that shines in a dark place. In other words, picture it. When the word is spoken to you as I'm teaching you this morning, some don't understand what I'm saying. Some understand what I'm saying a little bit. But what the Bible is saying here is that if you understand it a little bit, it's enough. Pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place. Everywhere is dark, but there is that little speck, that little light. So what do you do? You pay attention to that light. The Bible is saying the more you pay attention to that light, it grows bigger. That light grows bigger. It grows bigger. It grows bigger until it takes over. Look at what he said. We will heed it as to a, I mean, to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until what? Until the day dawns. 
And the morning star rises where? Rises where? The morning star is going to rise from your heart because that is where you see. That is your ability to see in your spirit. If a man cannot see with his spirit, that man cannot do anything by the spirit on earth. The heart of a man born after God is the eyes of that man. Is the eyes of the spirit of that man. Is the eyes of the spirit of that man. Is the eyes of the spirit of that man. The Bible says, pay attention to it until the day dawns in your heart. Until your heart receives the fullness of the light of the word that you are receiving. A lot of people think that the word of God, receiving the word of God is just to come like this and the pastor preaches or you open your Bible and you are studying and then you rise up, you say, I've studied today and then you go and you think that is what we have been called into. You are grossly mistaken. That is not what we've been called into. Many people have scheduled it, said today I will study Ephesians chapter 1, tomorrow I will study Ephesians chapter 2, next tomorrow I will study Ephesians chapter 3, and they have scheduled it that way. So the money comes when they are studying Ephesians chapter 1, and they read Ephesians chapter 1. They do not have full understanding of it, but it does not mean tomorrow they will go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Tomorrow they are going back to Ephesians chapter 2. You don't understand what we've been called into. A man that is born in Christ Jesus knows that my heart must receive the light that is coming from the word of God. And so until you receive the fullness of that light, don't go. Don't move on. It's not a competition. You are not trying to say, nobody is going to ask you, how many chapters have you covered? How many have I covered? No, it's not about that. Begin to pay attention to yourself. How much do you know? How much of light of the light of the world have you received? That is the reason why you do not see people manifesting the fruit of the world. That's the reason. Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, give yourself over completely to the world. That what? That your profiting may appear unto all. Because it's a matter of time. When that light begins to show in your heart, there is no way you won't manifest something that is totally different on the outside. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Begin to change. Make adjustment. Regarding this understanding that you are gaining. Your heart is very important. Your heart is very important. Let me use another illustration. Mark chapter 4. Jesus gave a parable there about the seed. I want you to know and settle it in your heart that there is nothing wrong with the word of God. If the word of God is not producing in your life, it is your life you should check, not the word of God. Because the word of God, the Bible says we have the word of, the prophet, of prophecy confirmed. It is done. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4. Jesus gave a parable. Look at what he says here. 26. Jesus said a parable to, and he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep by night, and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the earth. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Now, what does the man do? The man takes seed and he scatters it in his ground. What I'm teaching you this morning is the ability to even obtain the seed. What I'm teaching this morning is how to obtain that seed. Because it tells us here that once that seed is obtained and is planted, the effort of the man has ended. From that moment, the ground begins to supply the nutrient that will cause growth to happen to the seed. But the problem is, people pick what they presume to be the seed. Just anything. What they do not understand. What they have not really, really gained insight into. What they have no knowledge of. They are practicing. And so it's not yielding anything. But you see, for a man to be able to plant the seed, you must first recognize that this seed, that seed must be ministered to you. What does the Bible call the seed again? What does the Bible call the seed? 
the word. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. What I'm teaching this morning is how to obtain that seed. I am telling you how to obtain that seed. The man is seated in this place and he's saying 2018 was a rough year. 2018 was very rough. How will 2019 be better than 2018? The man begins to minister and said, Pastor said it's by the word. So this man goes back to the word and he begins to read the scriptures and he reads the scripture. I cannot tell you the specific scripture to read. I can't. I can't. I can't. He begins to read the scriptures until he started getting, to, until he gets to a point where he's getting ministered to that this scripture is for you. Then he pulls it out and begins to pay attention to that scripture. As he pays attention to that scripture, the Bible says it's like that light getting bigger and bigger. He begins to receive direct directions. He begins to receive gain understanding and insights. He begins to receive innovative ideas regarding the word he has received. And he begins to do what? To implement what he has received. He begins to implement it. The place of implementation is when the seed is put on the ground. After the implementation, the Bible says the, farm, the man should go back and do what? Sleep. It will yield by itself. It will yield by itself. But the beginning point is the most important. Where you start from, the pen is what will determine where you are going to end. If you start with Receiving the seed from God is going to end in praise. But if the seed is just anything, wild oats, <laughs> that you want to sow, it's going to yield tissues and weeds. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is nothing wrong with the seed. Pay attention to receive the seed. In other words, don't stay away from the word of God. Stay in there. Hang in there. Hallelujah. The Bible says you have the fountain. With you is the fountain of life, and in your light, we do what? We see light. In your light, we see light. The Bible says, and the word became what? Flesh, and as is dwelling amongst us. What was in the beginning was the word. That word at that beginning was intangible. But look, look at it, even in creation. What am I talking about? Even in creation. In the beginning, the Bible said God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. When God was to start the work of creation, what did he do? He said, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Before anything begins in your light, life, you must receive that light first. It begins with the word. God said, let there be light. Before any other thing. The first thing, let there be light. That same light you must receive when you are studying the scriptures. Once that light comes, I'm telling you, the work has begun. You can begin to build on the face of the earth. You can begin to build on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the glory of God. You remember I like referring to this a lot. Because when you talk about glory, glory is likened to what? To light also. To light also. Glory is likened to light. When the Bible was talking in, um, in Revelations, I think 21, it was talking about the glory of the new kingdom, the new, the new earth. He said there is no need for light coming from the sun and stars in that city. He said the glory of God is what? The light of that city, the glory of God. So the light I'm talking about here has to do with the glory of of God. When you stay with the word of God, the light of God will shine upon you. The more you stay in there, the more that light will take over your being and what you see will begin to change. What you see will begin to change. Hallelujah. One last thing before I leave this place to tell you is that one of the things that the word begins to do in the process of gazing at the word of God is that it begins to adjust the things that are within you that are not right. You know some things are not right, so you are trying to adjust. But there are so many things you do not know that are wrong with you. There are so many principles that you are not aware of that the word will bring you into the awareness of. Hallelujah. And it is in the place of the word. The Bible says in, um, in Psalm, is this Psalm 119 now? And all that. He said the word, no, Psalm 19. Psalm 19. He said the word of God is perfect. Making wise the simple. He also said the word of God. Uh, let's, look, let's look at it. The one I want to point your attention to is that he said the word of God is perfect, converting, converting, converting the soul, converting the soul. It causes some things to happen within you. You don't remain the same person you have been 
when you stay with God's word, he begins to put some things within you. He begins to point your attention to things that you were not aware of before. Psalm 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the law of God is perfect. Verse 9. He said the law of God is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making what? Wise. The simple. Another word for simple is the word foolish. That is the one who does not know. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Eh? Why are you quiet on me? The commandment of the Lord is pure. Doing what? Giving light to the eyes. Giving light to the eyes. Making the eyes to see the correct image. Making the eyes to see what God, the picture that God is painting before it. Making the eyes to understand the next thing that God wants to do in your life, in the country, in the nations of the world. Making, he said the word of God has the ability to do all these things. He has the ability to convert the soul. What does that mean? To adjust your behavior. To adjust your mindset. To adjust your mindset. To adjust your mindset. But beyond your mindset, after adjusting your mindset, it has the ability to set before you the correct image. How does it do it? The light that shines from the word of God plants the image in your heart of the things that you are supposed to do next. Hallelujah. It plants the image in your heart regarding the things you are expected to do next. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some other things, but I think it's let, let me just keep it here for now. Amen. My prayer for you, I've been praying this prayer for close to a month now, is that your eyes will be open. Amen. Is that your ears will hear. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me, the light of God's glory God's is shining on me. Shining on me. My, eyes My eyes are open. And I see clearly, I see clearly. what the Lord is doing. In and around me through the word of God that has been ministered to me. Can we say that one more time? The light of God's glory is shining on me. My eyes are open and I see clearly what the Lord is doing in and around me through the word of God that has been ministered to me. I want you to rise to your feet and just for one minute. For one minute, just make this your prayer. Make this your confession. Make this your prayer. I don't know what God is ministering to you. But remember the last time I ministered here. For the woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus. And the light that hit her heart was if I can, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. That was the light he received from the testimony coming from Christ. That was the light he received. What light are you receiving? 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 Makalabado so tonde legedesha. Mandalabado so tonde legedegedesha. Mabababado so tonde legedesha. Reke leke 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 legedesha. Reke leke 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 legedesha. What light are you receiving? I will tell you some of the light I've received. I see talented singers that are full of the Spirit, attracted in and attracted to the baptizing church. I see LCD screen cover the background from end to end. I see a great crowd coming to worship and listen to the Word of God. I see buses bringing people from different parts of the city. I see skilled, paid staff with great hunger and thirst for God. I see a workforce that is committed, creative, innovative, blessed and full of the Spirit. I see students on, this, on scholarships. I see transformation of lives from nothingness to abundance and settlement in life. I see organized service, official but connected to the people. I see testimonies of great miracles by the Word of God. I see great things happening in this house. That is what I see. What do you see in your own life? What do you see in your own life? You've got to see through the eyes of the, of the scriptures. To the light that shines forth.
from the scriptures. The Bible said the word of God. We have the word of prophecy confirmed unto us. We will do well to pay attention to it. As we lie shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in our heart. Until the morning star arises in our heart. When the morning star arises, Christ is the morning star. When he arises, Christ is a dimension in the spirit. It's a dimension of possibilities. Things that are possible on the earth. It's a location in the spirit. In Christ. He said, until the money star arises in your heart. When the money star arises in your heart, you will know what to do next. You will no longer grow up in darkness. You will understand what you are to commit your time to. Your planning won't just be based on strategy alone. It will be based on what the Spirit of God has supplied. It will be based on what the Spirit of God has supplied to you. I know what to do next because the light of the gospel shone in my heart instructing me what to do next. Who to link with. Who to call. Who to associate with. It begins to lay in place the things, the order of things that will soon become visible. What is it telling you? What is it telling you? Today can mark the beginning of a different way of living. You can live the supernatural naturally. Naturally. How? By the word of God. 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 The word of God is light. It illuminates every darkness. The reason why you struggle is because you cannot see. The moment you are able to see, you will know what to do. You will no longer struggle. The reason why that pain is still there is because you cannot see. The day you see through the light of the word of God that you are the healed of God, not what somebody told you, but what you receive from the word by yourself, that pain will leave you. That pain will leave your body. That pain will leave your body. You want to live in abundance. It takes knowing, receiving the light that comes from the word of God. The moment that light comes and takes over completely, I tell you, you will know what to do. You will know what to do. We have been blessed beyond measure. We've been blessed beyond measure. The word of God is your advantage. That is the light you are to navigate your way through in this world. The light of life has been ministered to you. Let him cast, let him cast the image of Christ in your heart, which is the location where you begin to see into the realm of the unseen, where you begin to interact with things that are intangible but real. All the same, intangible in this world, but tangible in the realm, in the dimension that is called in Christ. John was writing, he said, that which we have seen, which our hands have handled, that which we have interacted with, that same is what we minister, we present to you concerning the word of God. Makalabadoso. Rekeleboso tanda. I see your business receiving a boost by the word of God. But you've got to plant it. You've got to plant it. I see you receiving clarity on what to do next in your life because the light of the word is eating your heart. You are seeing clearly to the eyes of your heart in the name of Jesus. I see you see relationships you are to cut yourself off from because the light of the word of God is shining in and through you and you know you have no place in with that person and then the light of the word is shining on you 
and you know those you are to reconnect with and those who are to connect yourself with because the Lord has sent them to you that is the advantage we have the word of God the advantage that we have on earth we become what we see we become what we see we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a glass as in a mirror are changed into the same image we are changed into the same image we are changed into the same image Amen. The spirit of accuracy has come, up, come upon you through the word in the name of Jesus. The spirit of accuracy is in operation in your life from today in the name of Jesus. The spirit of accuracy is in operation in your life from today in the name of Jesus. I tell you what. Jesus walked to that pool, Solomon's porch. Many people there were in need of healing. He walked straight to one man. There were many people, but he walked straight to one man and he healed that man. Why? Because he was operating in the spirit of accuracy. He knew it wasn't for these people, it was for this man. They told him, your friend Lazarus, whom you love was dead. He stayed back two more days. By the time he got there, Lazarus was dead four days in the tomb. But Jesus knew what he saw. So he could call for Lazarus out of the tomb because he saw through the light of the gospel. That is what I've ministered to you today. That spirit is in operation in your life. In the name of Jesus. You are taking the right steps. You are saying the right things. You are going to the right places in the name of Jesus. You are mingling, relating with the right crowd in the name of Jesus. You are writing the right document in the name of Jesus. You are sending the right emails in the name of Jesus. You are calling the right people in the name of Jesus. You are putting in place the right strategies in the name of Jesus. Everything about your life is different from today and you are achieving and accomplishing the God great result in the name of Jesus. Result at the grade of what you have received through the light of the word of God in the name of Jesus. Your life has taken a different type trajectory from today in the name of Jesus. You are following a new course that will deliver to your hands all that God has destined you for in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks, Father. We adore you. We adore you, Jesus. Just one more time, we take that song. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. You opened my eyes. Now I see beauty that made my heart to adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Let's worship God with our song. Let's worship God with unveiled faces. Let's worship God with unveiled faces. Makalabadosha.
Hallelujah. I want us to I want us to sing a song of celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's this song by Sinatch that says, I know who I am. I want every one of us to sing because I want us to leave this place with a consciousness of what God has perfected within us. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we sing that song and celebrate this morning? Hallelujah. celebration to continue hallelujah so we're going to sing chosen generation one time and then we two chiefs pick another song to usher in the new baby that god has blessed us with as we dedicate the baby this morning hallelujah we are we are a chosen generation come on to show we that all i require
I want you to open your mouth and begin to bless this baby. Hallelujah. I remember her naming. Now she's awake. Trying to observe what we're doing. Just open your mouth and bless her this morning. Every one of you, you are all privileged to be here to bless her. We are here to celebrate you and to dedicate you to God. Hallelujah. Just open your mouth and bless her this morning. Oh, we give you thanks. This is God's heritage. God's gift unto us. We receive our, oh God, into your family, the family of faith. She's serving you all the days of our lives, of our life. She's serving you all the days of our life. Marco Zotonda Labadosa. Raise Alabadoso Tonda Legede. Reka Librahanda Labadoso. Leka Labadoso Tonda Legedesha. We have displayed our name on the screen because I wanted to mention our name as you pray this morning. Mention our name. Hallelujah. As you pray this morning. Watch out for that name. Because she's going to do great things. She's going to bring meaning to that name. Somebody is asking, what is in the name? Really, what is in the name? But when the one who bears the name begins to accomplish great things on the earth, the name takes a new meaning. When the name is mentioned, certain things come to the heart of people. That is what is in the name. She's going to make great things out of that name in the name of Jesus. Victoria, we prophesy to you this morning by the word of God that every day of your life the pleasure of the Lord will prosper in your hand in the name of Jesus. You are for miracles, signs and wonders on the earth. As I said recently, I prophesy on you also that you will grow in God and your words will become laws on the earth in the name of Jesus. What is bound in heaven is what you will bind on earth. What is bound on earth is also bound in heaven because every day of your life you will live in alignment with heaven you will dwell in that dimension in the name of Jesus your mind is influenced by the word of God and what comes out of you is wisdom as supplied by the spirit of God in the name of Jesus you are not an ordinary child you are bringing many sons unto glory in the name of Jesus accidents diseases calamities and the things that claim lives on earth, they will avoid you intelligently in the name of Jesus. You will only go to where you have been ordered to go in the name of Jesus. Your steps are ordered all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Whether your parents are there or they are not there, the presence of God stays with you permanently in the name of Jesus. You are growing in that household and you will grow to fulfill all that we have prophesied upon you at your naming in the name of Jesus. You are a global influencer in the name of Jesus. You are the one supplying solutions to our world in the name of Jesus. Where there is chaos, you will bring order in the name of Jesus. Where there is conflict, you will bring peace in the name of Jesus. For God is in you. And wherever you go, you take with you the presence of God. 
and you arrest the atmosphere and bring them in obedience to Christ in Jesus name Victoria I dedicate it today in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit you will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus we will always rejoice over you in the name of Jesus you accomplish great things and the name of this family is greatly praised because of what you will do, because of your exploits. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. to thank God today for Victoria. Um, sometime in February, I was sitting behind, it was Thanksgiving service. I felt funny. I just got up and lo and behold, I was bleeding. Pastor Fumi and some other women helped me out. Went to the ER with Pastor Fumi. We said, they said um, there was a threatened miscarriage about to happen. Pastor Fumi prayed with me before she left that they might see an opening but whatever was the, was the opening there, he, we commanded it to close. Truly, the scan showed an opening somewhere that was supposed to have closed, but didn't close up at some weeks of pregnancy. They asked for a physical examination. The first doctor came and said to my husband, Oga, sorry, oh, it's 50-50, and there's nothing we can do. It's too early to do anything. It's still in the early stages and all that and all that. So he was like, okay. He now said, but sorry, let me call the second eye to help me look at this. He called another person. The person said, ah, doctor, why did you say 50-50? This thing has come out now. This thing is out. Everything is at the mouth already. Let them just go home and wait. And my husband got angry. He just said, okay, put on your shoes. Let's go home. You're having this baby in September. And that was how we left. We just took our things, went home. I was still, are you sure? Are you not sure? They gave us three days. They said, if by Wednesday nothing happened, we should come. Wednesday morning, we got prepared. My in-laws, my family members were praying. There was a prayer chain for those three days. We went on Wednesday morning, went to the scanning room. They wrote again, um, irreversible miscarriage in process. Please scan. I, I was now angry. I said, you people have started again. We now entered. The scanning woman was like, Madam, what's the matter? I said, you see what you people wrote? Just do the scan, let me get out of here. She now scanned. Ah, Madam, look at the screen now. Why are you like this? Look at the screen. Lo and behold, we saw Victoria, hands and feet, kicking and everything. All this while, the word we, that God gave Pastor Fumi to us was nothing missing, nothing broken. For those three days, we're saying nothing missing, nothing broken. The said product of conception was out and all that. We said it's not a baby. And that was it. In September, we had her. Nothing was missing. Nothing was broken. Just want to praise God. Hallelujah. So choir, I think you're going to give us a very good, um, a very good song to celebrate. Hallelujah. So this is a miraculous, miraculous baby. Hallelujah. We go to you see how pretty she is. Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah, as we celebrate, give him praise unto his name. All the way, all the way, we got to have spoken to one is spoken to all so 
I speak concerning everyone here today, nothing missing, nothing broken. You know, it's not only pregnancies that get miscarried. There are lots of things that get miscarried. If you are in business, you will understand that. In fact, the, the, the level of miscarriage in businesses, you understand? But we decree in the name of Jesus, concerning us, nothing missing, nothing broken. Every conception of business is brought to delivery in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There, there's something I forgot when she was talking. Uh, the, the faith has a voice. When you hear things said to you, don't allow it to go. Faith doesn't mean I keep quiet. I, after all, I know what I believe. You just keep quiet. No. Once it is said to you, you must respond. Once it is said to you, you must respond. Jesus said, go to that tree and find if you will get a fruit. They didn't find the fruit there. Jesus caused the tree that no man will eat of you anymore. Faith has a voice when the word, I mean, when things are speaking to you, business or doctors or whatever they are saying to you, activate the voice of faith and speak back to that situation is very important. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. In the same spirit of celebration, everyone who had birthdays, anniversaries in the month of December, please just come to the front. We have a lovely cake for the December babies, December celebrants. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm supposed to be on that table. My anniversary is in December. <laughs> so, my wife will represent me on that table. Right? So, everybody, anniversaries, birthdays in December. Where's Bridey? We had so many birthdays in December. Please, we're going to dance. Ah. The stage would have been empty. Thank God I have a representative, right? <laughs> okay. Or don't take the mic and go and sing it there. Well, let's dance, right? So, December babies, we are going to dance. Praise the Lord. You can start singing from where you are. Oh, I Let's celebrate with all the December celebrants. If you hear your bed, it was in December. You don't have to be a church member if you're still visiting for the Thanksgiving. And you have any celebration in December. Just join us here. Hallelujah. Thank you very I think I think if we're going to um, call the results for the year, December. You know, this is what we do every month. And we usually almost beg other months to dance. But we are begging the December people to stop. 
<laughs> so thank you very much. Pastor Kwe is going to say a word of prayer and uh, we'll continue with the, with the announcement. Please stay behind the cake. The cameraman, are we ready to... Pastor Tokwe will pray, then we'll cut the cake, then we'll... Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We adore your name, O oh God. Thank you for the celebrants, those who are celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and other things. But we thank you because this is our life. We live a life of victory. So because we live a victorious life, there is always something to celebrate. Because we live a victorious life, we always look at what you are doing in our lives. We take stock and we give praise and thanks to you. Lord, I pray, oh God, that today, those who are celebrating birthdays, you will give them many more years, oh God, on the earth to take stock of your faithfulness in their lives in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may apply to wisdom. That they are not just growing in age, oh God, but they are growing in their relationship with you and in wisdom, oh God, as they submit to your lordship in Jesus' name. Those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries, I pray that that union will continue to be a model of Christ on the earth in the name of Jesus. Bible likens marriage to the union between the church and Christ. I pray that the love that you share will be that that exists between the church and Christ in the name of Jesus. Nothing can break that union in the name of Jesus. The Bible says what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The no man includes the two people that are involved also. Let no man put us on that. So we pray this morning that it is the Lordship of Christ that we all sway in your union in the name of Jesus. It's getting better and better. Brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we are going to cut the cake, right? So... <laughs> we're going to cut the cake so just stretch your hand towards the cake at um, we're going to say TBC at the C of the TBC we'll cut the cake cameraman are we ready okay T B C hallelujah put your hands together for them thank you very much as you're marching, you'll be dancing, singing, and dancing in your heart. Hallelujah. He has given us victory. We will lift him higher. We will lift him higher. He has given us victory. We will lift him higher. 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 Hallelujah. people we need to give you we need to give you an award hallelujah praise the lord if not for time we would have allowed you but we can't afford to allow you now praise the lord hallelujah my name is charles and i have the privilege of um, hallelujah okay so i'd like to welcome you once again to the baptizing church this is a place of the word is a place of love is a place where uh, we emphasize the word of God and we also emphasize the ministry of the Holy Spirit we are people of love we are people of the word we are people of prayers and I'm sure you already know we are people of the word hallelujah and um, if today is your first time of worshiping with us in the baptizing church I'd like you to just signify by just waving your hands so that we can give you a very good welcome. If this is your first time in the baptizing church. Please put your hands together for them. We we'll have a beautiful song to welcome you. HMC, have you? Yeah, welcome to the baptizing church. We love you.
church um, we're glad you're here today we thank God that you're here we have a small reception for you there's a brother behind uh, very handsome brother with the glasses just look behind immediately after the service he'll be taking you to our welcome center where he will tell you more about the church and also get more information for, from you we have um, a gift for you please make sure that gift is not wasted it was bought with you in mind so please do us well to go to the reception center and receive your gift hallelujah amen on sunday uh, sorry tomorrow tomorrow we're going to have our crossover service here from 10 p.m it's going to be 12 10 to 12 30 12 10 p.m to 12.30 a.m., right? So we're here, and like Pastor said, it's not a religious activity, right? We're here to thank God, to bless God, and to praise God into the new year, and to help some people's faith as well. Hallelujah. So that they can start 2019 as in on the high side. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just a few announcements. We meet here every Sunday by um, 9 a.m., our, our main service starts. But before that, by 8 a.m., we'll have the prayer service. And the workforce prayer starts by 7 a.m. School of Ministry is going to be resuming in two weeks. So um, that's going to be on the 13th of January. We have what we call the School of Ministry, which is a training uh, program for our workforce. But if you would like to be a part of the School of Ministry, you can also... Uh, see any of the pastors and we can um, have an arrangement to enro enroll you into the school of ministry then we normally meet here on Wednesdays by 6 p.m. for our uh, midweek services which is an interactive Bible study but this Wednesday we're not going to be having midweek service this Wednesday right so our midweek service is going to continue next week okay that's the the week after next right so okay this week Wednesday next week Wednesday I'm correct so it's, <laughs> it's going to continue next week hallelujah so um, on the on our first workforce meeting is going to hold on the 12th our first workforce meeting is going to hold on the 12th of January and it's also going to be our budget presentation so we um, ask all the members of the workforce to mark their calendars. It's going to be a time that we're going to um, set the ball rolling for the year. There's going to be a lot that will take place in that meeting. So please, we ask all the members of the workforce to endeavor to be there for the meeting. Please, let's put our offerings together. If you have your offerings, you can put it together. Let's pray for, for the offerings. You can raise your offerings as we pray this morning. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We bless your holy name because you are a faithful God. We thank you because you have provided seed for us once again. And for this we are grateful. And we sow in faith. Out of the abundance we sow. We do not sow from lack but from abundance. We thank you because you have given us abundance and we live in abundance. Thank you, Father. For the seed we have sown is multiplied back to us because we sow in faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ushers, we can go around and, and collect the offerings. We are also live on all viable social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Our services have been live streamed. So you can watch the service um, on www.tbcabuja.tv or you can just go to YouTube and search TBC Abuja. You're going to see all the previous messages and all the previous services. The messages are available free of charge on our website, www.tbcabuja.org.org. It's available free of charge. You can go download as many messages as you want. Just get drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, would like us to be on our feet as we um, close the service. We're taking the TBC mission statement as we close the service. Multimedia, are we ready? Multimedia, are we ready? 
Okay, in the baptizing church, we are a generation of believers who are in, who are in identification, identification with the persons, purposes, and missions of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and who use such identification to influence peoples, nations, institutions, and systems. That's why in the baptizing church, we are raising persons of influence. Go for this week, for the remaining part of this year, and for the whole of next year, and be a person of influence. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.